So let's take a deep breath together as we come into this almost mid-September Sunday. It's just unbelievable that we are on the 13th of September already, and we are. So this is uh, mid-September, this is the second Sunday, and we have our theme for the month of the Great Awakening. The Great Awakening. Awakening being that come into full attention, coming into full awareness, being fully aware of, of, of what's going on in, around us, what's going on in our lives, what's going on anywhere, just, just sort of waking up, waking up to the power and the presence of God, waking up to the awareness of that power and that presence of God is always right where we are, always, always right where we are. Ernest Holmes says, now is the time to awake from asleep and that any, any belief that we have, that we, are, we have a life apart from God is a dream from which we must come awake. Now is the time to wake from a sleep. And any belief that we have in a life that's apart from God is a dream from which we must come awake. So our life is not apart from God. God's life is our life. Our life is God's life. And so just, just, just continuing to wake up to that truth, continuing to wake up to that fact, really can keep us grounded and keep us anchored in what we know to be true. The theme for the month is, I'm sorry, the topic for today, the theme for the month is a great awakening. I just told you that. The topic for today is heed the call. Heed the call. Heed the call. A call, a call. You know, we often think of a call as being um, something profound, something from the heavens that God speaks to us in, in, in boom, a booming voice and, and something really profound happens and our lives change as a result. Uh, we head off in a different direction. Uh, that's not what a call is. That's not what a call is. You know, sometimes uh, uh, author David Spangler who wrote the book, The Call, talks about the difference in a summons and a call. A summons is something that happens uh, for something that we are called to do for a specific reason or, or going to a different, a specific direction. A call is totally different than that. A call is, is an awakening. A call is an awakening. It is something that we become aware of. It's an something that we, we awaken to, something that we become, uh, become aware of. It's like Ernest Holmes says about an awakening it, it, it is a process of evolution, a little bit here, a little bit there, until the whole eye is open to the, to, to the truth that our lives can never be separate from God and that our, 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 our lives can never be different than good. There is nothing that is different than good. And so a call is not, not something that's, that's necessarily a big thing, and it can be a big thing. Uh, oftentimes when we hear of calls, we think of call to ministry, a call to, to, to the spiritual walk or whatever, but, but a call can be so many things. There's so many different kinds of calls in, in our lives. And so I just invite us to just be open to, to the awareness that calls are always happening. Calls are always right where we are. But, and, and the background call is always the call of love, the call of love, because our purpose for being here on the planet. Our purpose for being here is to be vehicles and, 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 and delivery systems of God's love. And so anything that, that, that would facilitate our being that vehicle, anything that would facilitate our being that, 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 that carrier of love is a call for each of us. And so the call may, is, it may be different. It may be something that's, as I said, really big or something really small. Uh, it may be something that's, that's apparent, it's obvious. And then it may be something else that we have to explore. It may be something else that we have to explore. And so I'd just like to, to, to just mention that we had, a, we had a call here last Sunday. We had a call here last Sunday when we had Zoom bombers come into our, the sanctity of our, our Sunday service and, and spew racist uh, language and words into, into our chat. And, and it was very disturbing and you know, the, 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 they were immediately ejected and, 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 and we went on with the service. But you know, the call in that, that was so disturbing and so distressing for those uh, who had an opportunity to see it and those who found out about it later. And for me particularly, it was, it was quite distressing and quite saddening. And 
It was a call. The obvious call was the call to love, the call of love was, was the obvious thing to go to love. And the, 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 I, I'm so appreciative that Rachel went to love and that she, she just posted love everywhere in the chat. That, that was what came to her as a practitioner, just posting love. Love is all there is. And that's what we know to be the truth. And the, the, other, the other call, big call was forgiveness. Love and forgiveness were the, were the, were the, the big calls. But you know, and, and, and we, 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 we get there also, but it's the little calls. The calls come in all different kinds. Calls come in all different sizes. And it's the little calls that we have to be mindful of because when we can be mindful of the little calls, we can, we can and, and we get used to doing that. It's like exercise. We, we, we exercise our muscles of becoming aware of the calls, awakening to the calls so that when the big call comes, then it's, 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 it doesn't seem as big. I had just, just finished a forgiveness class uh, a couple of months ago, maybe not that long ago, and got a chance to do some more forgiveness work. And so when this situation happened last week, of course, forgiveness uh, happened, but it wasn't a big thing. It wasn't a, a it wasn't a huge forgiveness issue for me because I had I have answered the call of forgiveness. I answer the call of forgiveness all the time. So it's something that's always with me. So forgiveness is not usually the first place I have to go when something happens that is that is that is that is that is calling me. Uh, and it is a place sometimes I have to remember, go there also. Go, go there also. And that's what happened this week, you know. But the and also going to love, knowing that we are always being called to love. And and, and recognizing that it's so easy when a call comes for us to move into spiritual bypass, for us to move into to our heads rather than into our hearts, for us to move into our heads rather than into what we're really feeling, how we're, what we're really experiencing. And so just as I've walked through this week and processed my way through this week, I've had an opportunity to recognize call after call after call that weren't big things. And so I'm inviting you to, to be awake, to be aware, to, to heed is to pay attention, to pay close attention. It's not necessarily to, 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 to respond, it's not necessarily to react, but to heed is just to pay close attention, pay close attention to the calls that come in your life. Pay close attention to what you're being called to do. Sometimes our, our compassion, sometimes our compassion is the call. Because when we, when compassion is calling us, then we get a chance to see the others in need. We get a chance to see uh, of where we need to exercise compassion. We, need, we get a chance to see how we can use empathy to relate to what somebody else may be going through. We get a chance to see so many things when we allow ourselves to be aware of the calls. When we get we, we, the calls that, that, that are always calling, that are always calling us that are always pulling us forward. And behind it all, behind it all, as I said, is the call of love. It's the call of love. Love is always calling us forward. So I'm inviting you to just take a deep breath right now. Take a deep breath right now. Take a deep breath right now. And just think about calls. What's calling you? What's calling you? Is compassion calling you? Is creativity calling you? You know, when you, when you see something that needs to be done, when you see something that, 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 that needs to be taken care of, rather than criticizing, rather than complaining, it may be a call to you. It may be the call of creativity. Create a way to help. Create a way to do something different. Create a way to serve. Let your question be, how can I serve? Because creativity is calling. How can I serve? How can I give? What can I do? How can I participate? How can I give up myself in this situation? Because the call is not, is, is, not, is, is not judging our response or our reaction. The call just is. It's just, it's just calling us forward. It's pulling us forward. And as we allow it to pull us forward, then we also allow ourselves to move into that place of self-exploration, those things that we can do, those things that we can be open to. And so I, I just invite you to, to really be open and be aware of the ways in which calls are showing up in your life, the ways in which calls are, are showing up every day because they're showing up all the time. 
They're showing up all the time. And we have a right to say yes to a call or we can say no to it. We can say yes to a call or we can say no to it. It's okay to say no to it. And when we say no, I just want you to know it doubles back around if it's necessary for us to do it. It, it comes back around, sometimes a little bit bigger, sometimes in a different form. Sometimes it can even come back as a two by four. And we just wanna make sure that when the call comes, we are awake, we are aware. Because it, 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 behind it all is the call of love, behind it all is the call of God, behind it all is that life of God, that presence of God that is always calling us up higher, that is always calling us up higher. And in order to go higher, we have to go deeper. And so we're always being called to do that. You know, our emotions can also be a call. Our, our emotions can also be a call. I'm going to say that again. Our emotions can also be a call. And so I invite you to pay attention to your emotions, pay attention to how you're feeling about things, to pay attention to how you're being affected by things that are happening in the world. There's so many things that are going on in the world. There's so many things, the pandemic, the, 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 the politics, the, 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 the climate, uh, there's so much that creates fear. There's so much to create uh, division. There's so much to create separation. There's so much to create all that stuff that we don't want. So much stuff that we don't want that we have to continue to bring our focus back to what we do want. We have to continue to bring our focus back. We have to continue to, to return home. We have to continue to return to center. We have to continue to be grounded. We have to, con to continue to be focused. We have to continue to be aware, continue to be awake, continue to say yes. That's where we have to be always. And so paying attention to our emotions, our emotions will let us know exactly what's going on if we pay attention. And so, so, so just being into that place of allowing our emotions to be the call, then we can, we, we can move forward much more easily, much more effortlessly, and much more in response to the call of love. When our emotions ambush us, when they ambush us, then, then the call is the last thing we think about. You know, we're all over the place with it. And our emotions ambush us. You can tell when you are ambushed by your, your emotions, by your response. The response that is, 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 is not proportionate to whatever the situation was, whatever brought the emotion up. And we respond all out of, out, uh, all out of character, all out of uh, proportion to what it is. Then, then that's something for us to stop and take a look at because that's a call. That's a call for us. Something for us to stop, take a breath, take a look at, and be willing to move in a different direction. Be willing to take a, to take a step, uh, be willing to think about it, be willing to turn within, be willing to, 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 to be open and receptive to that guidance that is always with us. My emotions have been all over the place this week, all over the place this week. The biggest emotion I had was sadness. I just, I have been, I have felt a lot of sadness this week. Yes, I know the truth. God is all there is. God is right where I am. God was in the midst of what happened last week. And it was still very hurtful. It was still very painful. It was still scary. It was still very scary. And so the feelings of sadness, the feeling of sadness just was one that did not go away. And, and I was aware of that. And I decided to allow myself to just be with the sadness. But I know also there was still more stirring there, but I wasn't quite sure. Um, what that was. I, I, I was going to send a letter out to the community and, 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 and let you guys know exactly what had happened. Uh, but it took me all week to just process through what I was feeling and process through so that I could, could, could send the, the email out. And, and I can't tell you how many renditions of that letter there were. Uh, but, and I, as I was writing, I realized I was processing. And that wasn't, that wasn't what you didn't need to hear my process. But, but I also became aware that there was, that was, the emotions were blocking, they were packed, packed, packed in there. And, but all I could feel was sadness. And so I, I went through the week and Friday evening, I, 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 I called my daughter and I asked her opinion about something. And she gave me her opinion about it. And it was the wrong opinion. It was certainly not what I wanted to hear. So I immediately got a little testy and, and, and I didn't understand why she was saying that because I, I had my own opinion about it. I was just asking for hers. 
So she gave me her opinion again. And it still wasn't the right answer. So I still was a little testy and I could feel myself getting more and more annoyed with her. And so then she started to ask me questions about it, which really annoyed me because I didn't understand why she was going to ask me questions, why she was going to analyze me and why she was going to coach me because that wasn't what I asked her to do. I just asked her opinion. And she, I could tell she was getting a little tense, but she was taking a deep breath and she was trying to be calm. And I was, I was just being closed down. I didn't want to hear what she had to say. And she wasn't, she wasn't agreeing with me, which is what she was supposed to do. And I, finally, I just said to her, you know, um, that's okay, I'll just take care of it myself. And she said, okay, which really made it worse. But you know, as I was going through all that, I realized I could feel all the turmoil inside. I could feel the anxiety. I could feel the angst. And I know when I start feeling that way and acting that way, and we know each other well enough to know when I respond that way, uh, that, that it's, it's a button has been pushed. And that's what happened, that she really pushed a button and it just really, really disturbed me, particularly that she didn't agree with me. Um, so I, Finally, I just got off the phone with her and I made the decision, I'm never gonna to talk to her again. I'm never gonna call her again. And I certainly will ever ask her opinion again. So I, I was able to just sit and I began to be real aware of the fact that, boy, I was undergoing a lot of, of emotional stuff. I was feeling a lot of emotional stuff. You know, a lot of old stuff was, was coming up. A lot of old feelings were coming up. And I just had to spend some time just, just being with that. Spend some time thinking about that. Spend some time writing about that. Spend some time processing that. Because I knew that there was a call in there. There was a call in there for me to explore my own feelings, a call in there for me to explore what it is that I'm holding back, what it is that I'm suppressing, what it is that, that I need to release, that I need to let go of, what it is that I need to, to change in any way. And you know, what was happening was that, that uh, the, the visioning questions were coming up, not, not as visioning questions, they were just questions that come up in visioning. What do I need to release? What do I need to release? All that was coming up. I, I felt it, all this that I needed to release. And when I became aware of my, my emotions, when I became aware of, of all the stuff that I was feeling, I, 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 I revisioning immediately came to my mind because one thing I've been getting envisioning for a long time is when the question, what do I need to release comes up is I need to release clutter. Well, I, I think about physical clutter. You know, all the things around that, I, all the papers that I have, all the, all the things that need to be organized. What do I need to release? I need to release clutter. But as I was going through that process on Friday evening, I realized that the clutter was the emotional clutter, the inner clutter, the clutter on the, on the emotional side, on the mental side, and even probably on the spiritual side. You know, just, just the, the inner clutter. And then I, I thought, wow, duh, as within, so without. As within, so without. As within, so without. I, it was like I had a light bulb moment. I had a light bulb moment. All of a sudden, I realized all this stuff I was feeling inside was is exhibited all around me, on the outside, in all the all the little pockets and pockets of, of papers and pockets of clutter and pockets of this. As within, so without. Because I had all these little pockets of clutter, pockets of emotions, pockets of things that I wasn't dealing with inside. And so I, this, this was the call of my emotions. This was the call of the sadness because yes, th that experience was very, very sad. That experience, it's, you know, I'm sure I will process that for a while. And it also gave me the opportunity. It gave me the opportunity to really look at, 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 at myself, to really look at where I am. It, to really look at, 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 at how I'm walking through life, how I'm, how I'm doing life, how I'm doing my practice, how I'm doing my life. This is, this is what we all have an opportunity to do. This is what we all have an opportunity to do. What we all have an opportunity to do. So what I, what I have to say about that, about that situation Sunday, yes, it was, yes, yes, it didn't feel good to any of us, it certainly did not feel good to me. But you know, there's a saying that what they intended for evil, God intended for good. What they intended for evil, God intended for good. 
what they intended for evil, God intended for good. And so the good that comes out of this is the opportunity to grow, the opportunity to go deeper, the opportunity to, to, to open up, the opportunity to create a space so that love, so that love flows. That's the opportunity I have in my own individual life. That's the opportunity that we have as a community. That's an opportunity that I'm inviting each of you to take advantage of in your own life. Allow your emotions to be the call. Allow, allow your emotions to be the call. Pay attention to how you're feeling. Pay attention to how you're feeling. Because with that vision in question, what do I need to release? Clutter, you know, the emotional clutter. The, 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 the next question is, what do I need to embrace? What spiritual quality do I need to embody? And the answer always came through for me, order, order, order. And I thought that meant, and it does, organizing and, and bringing, bringing my physical space uh, to order. But first and foremost, it meant bringing my inner space into a place of order, allowing order to reveal itself in my inner being, allowing order to reveal itself so that as within, so without, so that it then can, begins to ma manifest in my physical space. And so I'm asking you, what needs to be released by you? What needs to be embraced? And your emotions will tell you. If you pay attention to it, your emotions will let you know exactly what it is. You need to release what it is you need to embody. And if you, if you, if you don't get to the emotions, you can look around in your life. You can look around in your life. If there are situations in your life that are not working, situations, relationships not working, finances not working, other things that are not working, health is not working, all those things that, that are not working, the place to look is within. The place to look is within, where, where is, where's the blockage within? Where's the blockage within? I'm being called to look within. I'm being called to turn within. I'm being called to, to explore what's happening within. I'm being called to explore what it is that's blocking my connection to the all that is. Because when we have all the stuff that we hold on to, whether it's against somebody else or, or just stuff that we hold on to, we're blocking, we're blocking the connection with the all that is. We are blocking our ability to live in oneness. We are blocking our ability to experience the, the call and to recognize the call of unity. We are, we are blocking the experience uh, of recognizing the call of order. All of, this is, all of these are God qualities. All of these are qualities that are so easy for us to, 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 to really experience if we just open our eyes, open our minds, open our hearts, open our entire being to the call, the call of love, because, because all that I'm talking about is love. All that I'm talking about is love. All that I'm talking about is love. That's all we ever talk about because love is all there is. God is all there is. God is love, love is God. No separation, no difference. And so let's take a breath together right now. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I, I wanna, just sort of take off. I feel like I'm on a rocket ship. I, I, I'm just really um, feeling some excitement, feeling some openness, something that I have not felt all week. And you know what I say? I haven't felt it all week. I probably haven't felt it for quite a while because I didn't recognize how blocked I have allowed myself to become. I didn't realize how you know, getting so busy, we get so busy that we, we uh, well, I get so busy that, that I, I go from one thing to the next thing to the next thing and I don't have time sometimes to just really process through what's happening with me. And, and I venture to say most of us are that way. We get so busy, we don't have a chance to process and be with ourselves. That's the call of self-care. That's the call of self-care. The call of self-care is when we recognize that, you know what, I need to slow down. I need to spend some time in the silence. I need to spend some time with myself. I need to spend some time because you know, when we're spending that time with ourselves, we're spending that time with God because there's no separation. There can be no separation. So when we need to spend time with ourselves, when we need to spend time, time just, just being, that's the time that we get to spend with the all that is, the, the, the source of our being, that within which we, we live and move and have our being, the allness and the fullness of God that is seeking expression through each one of us can express, can express when we have all this stuff going on, when our focus is someplace else, when we can't hear the call, we can't answer the call, we can't wake up because we're in the deep sleep of separation without even knowing that we're in it, without even knowing that we're in it because we let too, much, too many things come up 
that keep us blocked, that keep us from being aware of the fact that we need to wake up. We need to wake up. We need to wake up. And so I invite you today to heed the call. The call is an awakening. Heed the call. Take some time to just be so that you can recognize the call when it comes. You can rec and, and, and as I said, calls are coming all the time. Sometimes they're big, sometimes they're little. They're coming all the time, but it's always the call of love. So heed the call of love. Open your hearts, open your minds, do your spiritual practice, fasten your seatbelts again, because we're still you know, going through some turbulence and we'll be going through some turbulence for a while. And you know, despite all that, that's despite all that, the call is always to return unto God. The call is always to return unto God. And we return unto God when we return unto ourselves and when we return unto our awareness of the, the spiritual qualities that are seeking expression in our lives. So heed that call, pay attention to that call. Be willing to, to, to respond to the call. Be willing to respond to that call. Keep your eyes wide open to the truth that God is all there is. All there is, the only power, the only presence, the only mind, the only life, the only activity, God. Oh, let's take a breath. Let's move into prayer together. As we just take this breath together this day, just breathing into that place of knowing and sensing and feeling God's presence right here, right now, right where we are. Just knowing and sensing and feeling that presence that, that, that is always right where we are, that from which we can never be separate, that which is never separate from us, that is always, always, always right where we are. This only presence, this only life, this only mind, this onlyness, onlyness, onlyness that is God is, 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 is my very life. It is a life of each of us. It is our source, the only source, the source of our being is God. And so just breathing into this knowing, I speak the word for each of us this day. As we open our hearts and we open our minds and we say yes to the call, knowing that there are calls all around us, the call of love that is showing up in so many different ways. We say yes to the call of love. We open our hearts and we let go of those things that would block it. We pay attention to those things that are, that, that, that are, that, that are calls for us. We pay attention, we, we, we are fully awake. We take the blinders off and we allow ourselves to be fully awake, fully aware. Because when we are fully awake and fully aware, we are fully awake and aware to the presence of God. And the presence of, of God begins to unfold in our lives as healing in our body temples, as healing in our bodies of affairs, as healing in our financial affairs, as healing in our relationships as healing our hearts from when we are experiencing loss of any kind, loss of any kind, as healing, as, as comforting us whenever we're needing it, as, as healing all around us, healing on this planet, healing everywhere. We open our hearts, we open our minds, we open our entire being. We say yes to healing, yes to wholeness, yes to the allness and the fullness of God. This prayer goes out to anyone on this planet needing a prayer this day. All those who have been affected by COVID, all those who have lost loved ones to COVID and any place else, all those who are affected by the fires in California and Oregon on the West Coast, all those who are affected by losses of any kind, this prayer goes out knowing that God is in the midst of everything, everywhere, everything, everywhere. God is in the midst. God is in the midst. It doesn't matter what the appearance is, God is in the midst. This is the truth that I know, this is truth in, in which I am anchored, and this is a truth that I know we are all anchoring in this truth and this awareness of the presence of God. And so I pause momentarily in this circle of prayer so that you may speak the names of anyone you'd like held in prayer this day. You may speak their names silently or loud, and you may speak them now. And so for all those whose names were spoken here this day, I know that right where each of them is, God is blessing and keeping them. I know that there's not a spot where God is not. 
I know that all indeed is well. All indeed is well. All indeed is well, for all indeed is God. And so I simply say, thank you, Father, Mother, God. Thank you, infinite presence. Thank you, divine mother. Thank you, thank you, thank you for healing that's taking place everywhere, for wholeness that is being revealed everywhere. We see it, we know it. Thank you. And so it is. Amen.